Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a quick experiment on some black matte cardstock. Okay, it's just a le uh, text text uh, weight um, paper. It's real thin, but it is matte. But I wanted to experiment a little bit with some different media. In this video, you'll see some different media that I pull from, uh, I don't know, my old student art box in terms of some... A uh, white pastel Conte crayon, a white um, colored pencil, and I'll use this um, cola race. Kind of, I don't know what this is. It's a little bit less waxy of a white pencil. I didn't get around to using some of my Conte black here on this, or my uh, Conte crayon. No, this is graphite here. Um, but anyways, I wanted to experiment around with some of this stuff, and what I was especially curious about was in laying down some um, pastel marks, okay, and pastel um, kind of uh, morphic shapes on here, how some pigment ink would react to being stamped over it. Could it stamp over it, you know, with any degree of uh, opacity, or would it be translucent, um, or would it just not stick to you know, kind of a powdery, chalky surface in the form of this pastel, uh, these pastel marks in there. And I thought it covered it reasonably well with the VersaFine Black, um, wherever it went, um, here. But, uh, I don't know, it merged reasonably well, um, with the black of the paper, okay, in terms of the uh, the value of it, okay, but when I went back in and I spray sealed it, then all that um, type of pastel marks in there, if you've ever kind of spray sealed or spray fixed pastels or chalks, if you spray it too thick, you know, you'll know that it just kind of disappears, you know, it just gets absorbed into the uh, the paper or something like that. And it's made either translucent or all the way to transparent. You can't see it at all. So I've spray sealed a little bit heavier down here, you know, where you can't really see as much of that white showing through these trees. So this is all an experiment, but I like the overall look and I like especially how fast you can get the kind of these backgrounds going with this um, pastel. I thought doing these scenes like this um, with just strictly with, you know, your stamping media for the most part, you know, I thought that, you know, this pastel could really kind of expedite the entire process. Um, because, you know, using these matte papers and this pastel, pastel is really conducive, you know, uh, for the use on matte papers, you know, to get these kind of these, you know, grayscale types of uh, applications of it all the way to fairly opaque, depending on how hard you use that pastel on there. But um, I thought that worked pretty good, and uh, it would be a good thing to incorporate in with, I think, you know, these other methods that I've been using, which maybe aren't uh, quite so conducive. I like the overall look on it on all, but um, I thought we can kind of speed up the process on some of the uh, different areas there. So anyway, just kind of playing around with this. <laughs> I might have added too much of that white right there, just seeing how it would uh, kind of lay down on top of that um, spray fix here. So anyways. And you can kind of manipulate this, or you can manipulate this quite a bit, you know, after you lay down some of those pastels, which is another kind of fun thing about it. You know, you can kind of lay down some marks and then kind of manipulate it around with, you know, just some kind of dry media, like a chamois, or in this case, just a paper towel. So, I don't know, a lot more experiments to go. Uh, but anyways, if you choose to watch the video, I hope you enjoy it and hope you like the piece or some of the general techniques on here, you know, that we can, you know, take or leave with some of it. But uh, I think the pastel uh, would be a good one to incorporate in if you were going to kind of experiment with some of this matte dark paper. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks as always for tuning into the channel. Okay, this is my student art box, Pro Art 3000 
probably purchased back in 1985 or something like that. I'm guessing. I'm guessing my first year in uh, going to Long Beach State. But this is the type of thing that all students used for uh, their art supplies. It's basically a fishing tackle box. It's probably been just rebranded for uh, the art community. I don't think anything's changed as far as the compartments here, but uh, I haven't gone through here in a very long time. Um, you know, I think I dipped in here once in a while to, to, to grab something or to see if I had it, but um, some of this media in here, like this Conte crayon, this white Conte crayon, would be perfect, I think, for the uh, kind of the dark um, matte cardstock uh, scenes that I've been working on. So I wanted to uh, get into here. Actually, here's a look at this. here's a purple pastel. Just happened to be purple, and that's the color paper I've been working on lately. But anyways, I thought I would grab a, a few things out of here that I thought would make. I don't know, be more conducive for that um, surface that I've been doing. Um, here's, look, I don't know what this is. This is either a piece of chalk or white pastel. Um, I think it's pastel, though, more than chalk. I don't know, but uh, these types of, look like this gigantic piece of um, white, ch this one's chalk for sure. Uh, back when you we used to do, like, large format uh, drawings. Oh, here's... Um, Fabric Castell Coley Race. I'm not sure what pencil this is. If it's, if it's the same one that I was experimenting with before, or what? <clears throat> On that paper. But that would be good too. I've been just trying to force the um, the white pigment ink, um, and it works really great. But I just have a feeling there's um, a lot of easier and quicker applications that I be, can, can be doing with uh, media that's more conducive for, you know, a matte surface. Um, soft pastels, boy, do I want to get into that. That would be really good for um, some of these shadow areas on here, rather than applying ink. But like I said, the ink works great, and uh, I don't know, do I want to really get into pastels? They're really messy get it all over my hands, you know, I'm sure, which isn't a big deal, but, you know, these are like charcoal uh, sticks right here, they're super, they're like vine-like, super lightweight, it's almost like working with like pumice or something like that. Conte crayons, more Conte crayons, eh, maybe I'll pull out a black one, there's an ochre, uh, this looks like some kind of white pastel, it's all gummed up. Black, maybe a black Conte would be good. And here's some my little bits here. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to pass on this uh, charcoal for now, on this uh, piece. Here's this little filing stick that we sharpen up our, uh, our, our graphite on, you know, more than a... They like that more than like a, you know, traditional pencil sharpener for things. I think that you can kind of get your own edge or whatever. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Umbra cube pin. Oh, those are pins. I had no idea what they were. But anyways, it looks like I have some different brushes. Here's a little, little feathery brush. I don't, Royal Sable. Those of you here are painters know what type of brushes these are, but I can probably use something like this too for other types of applications. I'm not really quite sure. But, uh, yeah, let's pass on these. You know, this is a brand new uh, thing of it. I've never even used them. Back in the day, but, um, well, brush right here. Kind of a bamboo brushy type of thing. It's kind of interesting to work with. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, this is a Conte pencil. This is black. All right, I think that would be good. So we have our Conte pencil. Let's call it race uh, writer. Um, a couple different uh, Conte crayons and uh, purple pastel and uh, white uh, pastel right here. In addition to some of the other things that I've used in these uh, recent videos. Uh, oh, here, here we go right here. 
this is what I'm looking for right here. I think just a white, um, you know, standard uh, waxy colored pencil barrel, uh, Vera Thin. It's probably like a Prismacolor type thing, I'm guessing. But I don't remember for sure these types of things. I drilled holes in this right here to put this. Um, um, twist tie through here and then come out here because there's nothing worse than walking up, you know, to campus and this whole thing, this latch comes in and you get all these uh, things, you know, spilled out. But, okay, so let's use some of these right here and uh, play around with that. Let me think of some composition right now. I have no idea what I'm going to do, but this isn't going to be more of like a experiment. I what I want to see is um, what lays down on what, so I want to lay down some chalks and things like that, but I want to see if the Versafine, if I can get an impression on top of um, things like Conte, Crayon, and whatnot. I don't think dye-based inks will go on top of um, a lot of this dry media, even, you know, if I spray, um, uh, fix it, and then try to stamp it, I don't think there's any chance of a uh, um, dye-based inks, but I think pigment inks have a chance of it, so I want to go for these kind of a more amorphic backgrounds and things like that, you know, with haze and things like that. I want to see if I can get a, a you know, good crisp impression without it being um, too translucent where the white shows through, like if I have that um, deer or something like that with the horns like right in front of the, the moon or something like that for a nice silhouette, or like some cloud or foggy background. I want to see if what can... Uh, go on top of what and uh, you know it, things about um, doing things like that I have a feeling that I might have to work in reverse doing like little detail things first and then building up from there because you can't go with a gel pen on top of this chalky surface either because you know if you try to do anything like that it'll get stuck in the uh, the uh, the roller ball and it'll clog it up so um, I'm going to have to kind of think about um, how this is going to go, and uh, we'll see what happens in this uh, video here. All right, so let me think of a little uh, simple composition. Okay, let's do some quick experiments here. I have uh, the same paper that I stamped out uh, my previous um, experiments on here uh, in the purple, kind of uh, more thick. It's, it's a little bit closer to cover stock. Um, I don't know what uh, pound this is right here, but uh, it's a folded card, so it has a, you know, kind of a heftier weight. This is a matte dark purple, okay? It's, I don't, it's not coated or anything like that either. Now this is a matte um, black, and it's just text weight, okay? I just have some, uh, um, Oh, I don't know. Yeah, this one's 70 pound, okay? It's 8.5 by 11, but I wanted to try something on this uh, on this black here. We don't always have to go so dark. I mean, you can go with any matte paper or whatnot. These ones, of course, are going to be more conducive to a nighttime type of scenario. But um, anyways, let's do some little experiments here and see how it works out. All right, so um, let me try something with... Uh, let me try something here. I, I want to try something with this moon here. Let's do a couple different moons. And all right, I'm already kind of uh, wondering what I should do this. And okay, if I lay this down in white pigment ink, I need to wait for that to dry. Plus, I can't go across it with like this amorphic kind of hazy background. So I'm go I think I'm going to have to lay that down first. I think pigment ink can stand to go on um, over the top of this, you know, chalky, you know, pastel type of surface. So let's try something with that. All right, so I'm not going to do like a real formal scene here. I'm just going to do like a little experiment here, okay? So let's say we have a little bit of a haze or something like that around my moon it's being let's say it's being illuminated by the moon okay all right let's see here in my mind I, I'm not going for anything too textured but uh, if that's the way it turns out then so be it but this will be some uh, haze in the air right here okay and you can see the texture of the paper really showing. I don't know if I want that, but uh, 
we shall see. Okay, let's go for something like that. I do have some things in mind that I might stamp below this, okay. Um, but I'm keeping it a little bit uneven. And this is just an experiment. Uh, I guess if you like it, it could be kind of a how-to, but... All right, now, I do have some media, like in that tackle box, that would be good for this, but I'm just going to take a paper towel here to do a little bit of a kind of smudging around to a spread and uh, uh, kind of get in the grooves a little bit more and make it look a little bit smoother. I'm not really going for a kind of a textured surface, although you certainly could. Uh, but in this experiment, I just have a feeling that the pigment ink will lay down a little bit easier, maybe, on um, kind of a not-so-built-up chalky surface, okay? So this might help. I don't know. You can leave some of it in there, though. You know, why not? You could take a you know, look more like a, a drawn piece, you know? And certainly having the uh, texture of the paper is not a bad thing, you know? You can enhance, you know, from a textural standpoint, uh, the overall look. Okay, so again, that was just a piece of white um, pastel. Okay, if you have like a chamois, that's a real traditional thing to use with the kind of dry media. Or a, a stomp, you know, those little... I don't know, bound paper things. Okay, so that's something right there. I don't know. <laughs> no idea what's going to happen with this, but that's my moon right there. All right, let's try. I'm trying to think uh, some other things that might happen in here, but let's go with this. Okay, so let's experiment with this. Let's go with the uh, color box or hero hues or basically any type of uh, pigment ink. All right, let's see. I think I had one of my stylus tool tips designated for my white. And, uh, let me just make sure there's nothing on this one. All right, so I'm going to sponge this color, and you can, if you don't have something like a sponge, you know, applicator, if you have cosmetic sponges, you can use that. Um, you can use a paintbrush and go in there and kind of dip in just. I don't know. If you want that crisp edge, just try to... Uh, and I just made that hole with one of these old, you know, these uh, paper punch type things. All right. Kind of adding this in. I like to, there to be a little bit of variation, you know, in terms of... Well, this one, I, I made it... I didn't vary this one too much. Maybe, okay, it's a little bit darker below with less ink. I'll try to put a little bit more on top. Just so there's a little bit of variation in that moon. Which kind of goes along with the spirit of that kind of hazy build up there. I should have stamped this, or punched this. Well, I guess that's all. I can't get it in the middle, huh? Because this goes like that. Yeah, okay. I was going to say I should have punched it more in the middle here. So I'm not so close to this edge. Okay. Hey, so that looks pretty good in there. Um, it kind of has that feel of it, huh? So yeah, I like that variation right there down below. All right, so far so good. I think that Conte, uh, or not, uh, the, the pastel looks pretty good. And I mean, that background there you know, came about very quickly. Now, I don't know if you can do this with everything, you know, because you have, you know, some things you have to kind of have established, like I, if I wanted to stamp um, certain types of imagery in here, I want to stamp that first and then kind of work around it. But um, I think if you're going with kind of the more silhouette types of uh, looks, this will work just fine. Okay, now if I want a little bit of a, more of a glow around that too, I can take a, like a, a I don't have one already pulled out here. The um, cotton swab here, and uh, let's see, let's grab some of this ink here. Just using the hero hues. You can use the color box or either one. Okay, let's blot this off a lot so we can kind of 
unravel this a touch too to make it more of a softer applicator. Softer the applicator, uh, the softer the application of that media. <clears throat> so blot it off a little bit. Let me see if I can, let me see if this old dab on in certain areas around this uh, these clothes. See this haze in here now that I've had established. Let's see if I can kind of enhance some of it, you know, based on where it is. You know, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm thinking that on some of these streaks, you see where it's a little bit lighter here and it's darker right there where I've left these streaks in here? Maybe on the top sides where that streak meets more of just straight black, maybe I'll kind of enhance it a little bit more, you know, and have that top of that cloud kind of more illuminated. And again, it's just for variation. You don't need to do this. Um, I'm just kind of experimenting, seeing how this goes. But I do think some variation in that area would look pretty good. I mean, you can do it too with you know just some more pastels too. You can kind of you know bring it out a little bit more, maybe just like that. I don't know, it might be a little bit too chalky though, so I am concerned if I do too much of that. See, but it's a little bit li lighter right there, so... I don't know, maybe just more pastels too. You know, that would be a much faster application of that, if, the, if I can get some... Uh, what I'm going to stamp over this works just fine, then maybe just going with more pastel for that quicker look. Let's do that a little bit more here. Creating a little bit of variation. Okay. Over here, maybe I'll go with more of a bottom lit, you know, cloud. Something like that. Yeah, it looks okay. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> okay, smoothing it out a little bit more again. If we're working with pastels and shocks and that type of media, it wouldn't be bad to wear like a little respirator. If you're doing something like this, don't blow too much on it, you know, to get that dust off, because you start breathing in it, it's really not good for you. Okay, hey, this paper towel is working pretty good. I, I think that looks okay. But there's a little bit more um, kind of illumination now, huh? Okay. Uh... Okay, let's do a little, since this is an experiment. I kind of like the way it's going, though, but... Uh, <laughs> dare I use some of this? I guess so. Well, here, here, Conte Crown. Now, this is a little waxy, too. I'm just, I'm just kind of wondering if um, my pigment ink will be thick enough to stamp over this. Let's try it out. This is supposed to be an experiment, so... Um, Okay, so I'm going in and I'm trying to enhance. Um, it really isn't laying down very easy. This is the coal erase. Why? Okay, I need to use a little bit more pressure. I was being too gingerly with it. I don't want to go over that moon. I think I'd be scraping into it. This is a way to kind of... Uh, add a little bit more, uh, you know, more of a definitive mark. So kind of playing around with, um, you know, detailed and very general. Now this is very, now I'd have to go really hard with this for this to make a, you know, a decent, uh, you know, opacity, you know an opaque mark. I'd have to go pretty hard like that. Although that's not too bad. It's like, I don't know, it's like half, it's like a 50% gray almost. 
Okay, so that's laid down in there. Let's see how that works out. Now let's use the fair. I think this is Prismacolor. Yeah, I can get a little bit more opaque with this one. Okay, now this one's laying down much easier. That one's a little bit more chalky. It's it's not really a colored pencil. I, I don't know what it is. It's been too long <laughs> since I bought that type of thing and used it. Okay, so we have this general background. I, there's some nice illumination going on there, and that was pretty easy to do. You didn't have to use all these. I'm just kind of doing that to experiment around with it. I don't know. You can bring in some other types of colors of pastel. Maybe that would be interesting. I don't know. It might look uh, kind of weird, too, if you have um, kind of a white light. Although, like... You know, like a purple pastel or something like that it could be more of the shadows and the white could represent more of the uh, the light illumination but all right let's let's experiment right here with the impressions this is what I was really curious about here and the purpose for doing this video but um, let's go with some trees over the foreground like this and let's see if we can get some good um, opaque um, I don't know whatever you know some good coverage here in terms of uh, how this lays on the surface and this is a, a versifying pad by Tsukaneko, okay? Same makers as, as Tack and Peel. So let's see how this goes. Here, let's do this one right in the middle here. Try to lay it right over the top of that moon. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. But we shall see. That's why we experiment here. Okay, it's okay. It's not real flat though I do see some um, some of that white showing through let's go for a couple more impressions here let's go up here it isn't too bad but uh, it isn't real black as it maybe could be and it seems to be uniformly um, translucent. I'm trying to, I'm thinking of, is it less translucent where I've laid down some of this pencil? And the answer to that is maybe, I don't think so. You get some of that white pigment showing through in the moon for sure. It's not too bad though. Dye base inks, you know, I, I mean, I haven't tested it here, for, you know, but I would be almost be sure that that wouldn't, um, you know, cover at all um, with that dry media and then that waxy uh, surface there. Okay. Hmm. I don't, I don't mind the look though, but I, I wish it was a little bit darker, I think. But it's not too bad. Let me try something with a, with a more narrow tree. Try the pine, leafless pine.
if the um, stamp is larger than the pad, I usually take pad to stamp as opposed to stamp to pad. We'll make this one fairly tall. So it's one of the more older trees that has died. It's either that or it's closer to you, you know. Could be either, or could represent either. Okay, I'm just holding it down a little bit longer, knowing that I want all this ink to transfer um, to the surface. Okay. Okay, does that look? It's not too bad. Like I said, I prefer it being darker. All right, but is it dark enough? That's the question. And I'll have to experiment with this type, same type of thing on the on the. Uh, Purple card stock, or whatever card stock, those folded cards. All right, this is a little bit darker than what it looks like. I always get the glare off my uh, um, lights here. You know, even though oh, it's, it's matte, you get that kind of shiny glow. So let me see. That's what that looks like. It's it's okay. My impressions are more like a 80% black, though. I think you know, than black black. I want it really dark, but I don't know. The one, the one thing about this though, um, stamping out this Versafine, this is normally like a hundred percent black as far as I can tell. But getting that in there though, it, it really does. It takes on the, the spirit of this paper though. It, it looks like it's. See if I put this, right next to there. Those impressions. You know they blend right into it, right? So, while I don't get darker than this paper, which is pretty black, but it's probably more in the 90-something, 90 95 to 100, somewhere in there, I guess these do match up fairly well with that, even though they're on top of the white. Maybe not this one right here. I can see a little bit less, so maybe that's like a 90% black because the white is showing through, but I don't know. I mean, if you're going for this kind of this amorphic type of background, um, that's a pretty fast way to do it in there, you know, just add down some pigment ink, I mean, uh, like a pigment ink moon, and just to get these clouds going and, you know, uh, just a rip paper towel. And then I went back in there a little bit more with, you know, some of that pencil work. Let's do, let's do a little bit, let's see if we can do a little bit more to this one. Here, here's the moon, let's see if we can kind of define now that we've kind of stamped out our imagery, that was the uh, coal erase. Erase. Let's go with this white. Um, colored pencil. I'm bringing it in there now a little bit more. We can lay down a little bit more wax, you know. Now that we know where everything is, it's located. Okay, let's bring in a little bit of detailing into these trees here. All right, just what flashed through in my mind is I'm wondering if I could use this gel. Let's do a little experiment with both, but let's go with this um, colored pencil right here, okay? On the side of this tree, facing the light source, bringing in some of that, oops, sorry. <laughs> bringing in some of that, uh, Highlighting onto the top surfaces of the tree, limbs. Actually, that looks not too bad. Okay, now where they where I'm going over 
my branches that have a that has a thick layer of the pastel. This wax just isn't really applying very easy. Okay. I should probably sharpen this wax, this pencil here, but um on the rest of it's not too bad. Okay. I kind of have to go I'm going with a kind of a you know thicker thin type thing, you know, that type of mark. But that part, you know, that tree looks pretty good right there, I, I would think. And I'll put some highlights on the uh, this side of the tree here. So here's my moon illuminating this side of the tree. Put some uh, highlights on some of these branches, top sides of them. You can do. You can follow suit with some of these um, these pine, these uh, living pines, too. Maybe I'll kind of pull them out from the background a little bit. Maybe slightly more three dimensional. I don't know. Usually, when you have that illumination on certain parts of them that can kind of take on the illusion of a, you know, a three-dimensional form as opposed to being just a flat silhouette. Flat silhouettes look good though too, so nothing wrong with just leaving them as is, but adding in these little spots here. Okay, I was going to kind of play around with this white gel pen too. Let me see if this even sticks without going into some sort of a um, spray fix it. That's kind of working. I might have to kind of unclog it once in a while, but um, it's working. Okay, this is a Uniball Sig No um, gel pen here. Uniball Signo. This one's a 0.7, which is, you know, fairly detailed. It's kind of more, um, it's whiter than the moon, so it's, you know, these trees are <laughs> reflecting more light than the light source, but I don't know, just doing this little, these little touches, you know doesn't make it look awkward. Usually light source is going to be a little bit, you know, lighter and brighter, certainly, than something that's reflecting it, unless your reflective surface is like a mirror or something like that. Okay, hey, this is working. This gel pen is working over the top of this pigment ink and uh, powdered surface better than I thought it would. I just I just thought this would get clogged up with uh, like powder, but and I think it would if I if I didn't kind of mush, you know, spread that uh, um, pastel you know, around a little bit and really get it set into the paper. If there was some buildup up in there, I just I think it would be uh, clogging up this uh, little pen. Even though I'm not roller rollering it, I'm just kind of doing these little dots with that. But not too bad. So you can get the uh, use the uh, this for what it's most conducive for um, in terms of uh, you know a very detailed little mark. Okay, so 
It's a full moon out, but maybe there's some little stars here and there. Turn down my uh, exposure on my camera. In I'm usually working on a white surface. So when I have that much white surface going, I have to kind of increase the exposure uh, for the camera. But now that I'm exposing for something very dark, you turn that down a little bit. So, anyways, I'm looking at the camera um, screen in the back, and I think that's a little bit closer to. Um, you know, what I'm looking at here in real life in terms of the uh, the value of this page. Light and dark. Okay, let me see. What else was I thinking about doing on this? Let's go into a couple of these stars and uh, see if we can do some freeform um, uh, application of the pigment ink again. Maybe you want to add a little bit more to some of that moon and uh, make it a little bit more varied. This pigment ink, as I've mentioned in, in previous videos, um, light pigment ink on you know kind of a darker surface tends to dry um, darker than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied. It's kind of the opposite for dye-based inks. Those things always look darker, and then when they dry, they seem lighter kind of like they get this frosty type of look. In that in those instances you can kind of recover the uh, the deep deeper saturations with uh, by spray sealing your uh, pieces. And which I would probably do on this too. I'm kind of curious if this would get a little bit darker um, by spray sealing because one of the things with spray sealing um, or spray fixing um, kind of uh, soft media like pastels or chalks. A lot of times those pastels and chalks kind of start to, um, they darken, you know, when you spray them over. So maybe it would get my trees a little bit darker. I'm not sure. But anyways, here's, you know, total multimedia piece right here. And I don't know, I've used a lot of things in here. But, um, you know, this pastel, um, kind of that just cut out um, moon in there and some kind of dark silhouette um, imagery right over the top of it makes for a pretty formidable combination of media and uh, applications I think and then you can go in there and you can just kind of bring out you know a little bit more you know lighting here and there if you want to or not um, but I think it's a pretty good look let me go out and spray seal this and uh, see what happens to it. I think it'll darken things overall, but I'll just kind of spray seal it from height, you know, so it just kind of seals it off, and I'll give it a little bit of a thicker coating, and we'll see what happens to this scene. Okay, so here's kind of a before. Okay, and after. All right. Now, one of the things that I just totally forgot, you know, just the basic principles of spray sealing this stuff is, you know, where there's real kind of subtle, very thin layers of the, you know, your chalks or pastels, those things disappear very quickly if you spray seal them. Um, so I didn't spray it too much because I could see what was happening. I mean, if I really gave this a thick coating, I think all of that would disappear besides the, uh, you know, the, uh, the waxy coated pencil. So just a real thin spray and it really got textured too, you know, kind of where some of that um, sealant hit too. Um, it just kind of, uh, I don't know, made, compl like made transparent that, uh, that uh, application. So I hit it a little bit more down here and these trees really got dark and it's, I don't know, it's kind of interesting because they, that black really blends in with the paper so it's almost like this reverse um, or a resist, you know, it almost looks like a resist where you've stamped the trees out and just some kind of clear resist and then you've gone over it. 
I don't know, that could be some kind of interesting technique too, you know, for the future, you know, doing some sort of resist or, um, I don't know, mask or I, I don't know, whatever. And then you can kind of do these kind of morphic backgrounds right over the top of it. If some of you have um, templates or something like that, you can put some, you know, those trees or something like that down, get some of this morphic background going, and just pull those right off and you'll have these reverse silhouettes on there. And I think that would be uh, really cool as far as some kind of potential application. But um, let's see here. I was going to do so. Okay, I was thinking about a quote for this thing. Seems like it'd be perfect for a quote stamp. So let me take a look and see what I have on that. Okay, let's hope this stamps on here. Now I have this kind of spray sealant on here, but um, I, we'll see if the uh, the uh, pigment ink will stamp right over it. I'm going to use this one from uh, Scenic Sentiments sheet number four to the mind that is still the whole universe surrenders. I don't know, there's a stillness to this one. Moonlight, there's a kind of a visual stillness and you know, kind of silence, I guess. Let's see, I'm wondering if I should use... I'm kind of wondering if I should use my brilliance pad. My brilliance I don't think is real... It's a little bit dry, so... This is a moon... well, moonlit... moonlight white. That one, you know... Be bad, right? Oh... Alright, let me see if this is inked up enough. It's really old, so it's not kind of dry from usage. It's kind of dry from, uh, you know, just age. It's probably, I don't know, 15 years old, I'm guessing. I don't know how... I'm not real familiar with the pad either, because I'm not sure how... Um, where the ink is on there. What happened here? There might be some fibers on there. It kind of got into the... Uh... Oh, okay, that's fine. I think I had some little lint on this uh, stamp or something like that. Alright, so... This pad is so old, it's not even on here, so I'm kind of Ink it up like a cross like this to hopefully get it evenly applied as much as possible. Just kind of light tapping. You don't want to squeeze into uh, uh, these pads because it'll fill in all the detail. Okay, now well, let's just go for it. I just eyeball things. Oftentimes my my text, my copy is a little bit, you know, kind of angled, but um, I don't know, I usually don't care. Okay, to the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. I got it a little bit, it'd been better if it was a little bit lighter behind that, but it's alright, it just kind of blends in with that cloud, which is fine with me. Uh, especially in an experiment like that. I guess everything I do is like kind of an experiment, though, but, um, I don't know, kind of a fun little thing. I'll definitely incorporate that, um, pastel, though, that it really makes things go quick, um, if I have, you know, some large areas to fill in, for sure. I think that look in there, that, now, I, this is on black paper, but, um, See, like that haze back there. I don't see why, you know, that wouldn't be just as good as doing this in pigment ink, okay? The pigment ink is like dry brushing on kind of thick paint, which worked too, but um, I just think that that took longer to do um, than this. This one, I don't know, this one might be a little bit more opaque too than really thin layers of pigment ink. Maybe use both in conjunction with one another, I don't know. All right, I'm, I'm gonna break this up into two, so I'll do some more experimentation on this other piece of, uh, um, you know, purple card stock, you know, and I'll see how that goes. This, this stock is a little bit smoother than this black, so I don't know, maybe it takes the media 
a little bit different than um, this black, you know, letter weight um, stock. I'm not sure. You know, I'll have to experiment around. I don't think things, you know, it's not going to change the character, uh, characteristics drastically. I think it'll generally work um, on this purple, you know, smooth, like it did on this black, a little bit less smooth um, material, so. I don't know. I like the look, though, and uh, I don't know. We'll see where it goes from there. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I'll get to this other piece here very shortly. I think I'll just upload this video for now, though. All right, so. Um, the whole universe surrenders. Maybe that'll be a good title for this piece. <laughs>